Today's been uh, really good. Uh, it's a Saturday. I normally don't run on Saturdays, but um, since I've been trying to uh, to get more rentals on the books, so we had a, a one day for like uh, four, I think it was like four or five yards of concrete. And now I'm going to drop a can to an investor and it's only a three day rental. Um, prices don't change. Three days, seven days, 10 days. I, mean, I, I like to cut deals where I can. Um, you know, if it's like a one day or something like that, I might cut a little deal, but then cut the tonnage. But you gotta, you gotta stay at the same you know, like profitability, you still have, you know, maintenance, repairs, fuel, tires, advertising, all that stuff. So you really gotta kind of run the numbers and analyze like, you know, if I if I knock 50 bucks off for a short-term rental, is it really worth it? When the person will actually pay, you know, your, your regular rate, um, especially when you're limited on cans, that's my biggest issue. And once again, I'm sold out. Monday, I gotta pick up a can um, and I got to dump this other concrete can, so I'll have, you know, two to sell Monday. Um, but I'm sure today, it's only what, like 10 o'clock, uh, those two cans will be sold for the week. And if they're not, they'll get sold Monday uh, morning pretty quick. Um, it's been good. It's been steady. The SEO is still constantly in the works. Something to keep in mind when you do a Google My Business listing, it's free, okay? And if you, if you optimize it, you follow their guidelines and you get in the three pack, it is a free point of advertising that can bring a lot of eyes to your business, right? So you really don't want to try to game that. I've been doing SEO for probably a little over 14, 15 years. It does take patience. It does take a lot of time and it does take a lot of money. Um, even if you're doing it yourself, the point is, SEO is not something that you try. It's something that you do and it should be ongoing and you should be budgeting for that on a monthly basis. It should be part of your advertising budget. So I gotta get on the road. This one's gotta go. We gotta snatch up this can and uh, we're gonna head to Tampa. All right, so check this out. So I pull up to this to the uh, the investor's place, and uh, he goes, "Hey man, I'll give you a hundred bucks. You got to move this can." I said, "Bet, bro. Give me a hundred bucks. I'll drop this can here. Total trip, five fifty. That's what it. That's what I made on the. I make on this one, which is fantastic. It's tight. Really tight. Getting back in here. All right. Let's see." Yeah, we're good. <laughs> it's Wes's can. <laughs> I know that guy. Fuck this guy up like that. All right, Wes, I'm moving your can. <laughs> I'll leave it in a good spot. You guys won't have no problems. Oh my god, I just ripped my freaking shorts, damn it. grab the 20 yard and we're gonna put it back in the hole where we got the 30 just barely clear from the street which is good all right I'm gonna grab this one it's probably the best deal I made all weekend man not only is it a three-day rental but I got a hundred bucks to move another can which I can't complain about. And it actually all kind of works out because I'm just waiting to pick up that concrete can. 
So, uh, today I'll make gross 550 and 300 for a concrete haul, I'll make 850. A lot of that's gonna be profit. Man, these things are killing me, these auto lockers. When they painted the, the truck, um, they freaking painted it over the valve. And so sometimes it's working great and then other times it just, uh, it sticks. I mean, you can hear the air escaping. So I don't know what clogs it up. I mean, it could be a, I just gotta change the damn valve. It's, it's the, the thing is, is getting the time, right? So like having, having the downtime to swap out that valve. See that uh, cylinder? You'll see the other one come out here in just a minute. It's a reaving, a reaving cylinder. So I've got one, two, three, four, five pulleys. So it's a mechanical advantage. Um, if you're looking at a trailer system, you really want a reaving system, a reaving, hydraulic reaving trailer. Um, if you're gonna get into this, with a trailer, the only two companies to consider are Nedlin or Protainer. They're both gas-powered hydraulic reeving system trailers. Um, and that's if like, you, you know, and they're standard rail. So if you're, if you're talking about actually like, you know, growing into a business, you want to start on a platform that has a standard rail uh, and that has a hydraulic reeving system, which gives you that mechanical advantage you know, lets you move a little more weight easier uh, with a little less wear and tear on the equipment. A lot of these, uh, you know, straight cable trailers, and they're using like a, looks like damn near a piano wire cable. Uh, I mean, you can do it, but uh, to me, man, it just doesn't make sense to like build a, a business on a, you know, on a proprietary rail. Uh, with an electronic trailer, you know, when you it, it just becomes too much to worry about. Um, the hydraulic reaving system is meant to freaking pull weight, you know, day in and day out. And that's the difference, you know, we're not talking uh, consumer grade, like moving around weight, we're talking about commercial moving weight and that's on a daily basis. photos and DRS, Duffs and Rental Systems. We put that it's been delivered. We put the serial number and we are all set. So now I'm gonna check in with the concrete guys and see where they're at. Hopefully they're getting close to being done so we can go get that and we can go home for the day. Not a bad day for a Saturday. Sometimes it's worth it to come out on a Saturday. Just depends on you know what you got going. Alright, time to put on the big boy pants. Uh, we got about Yeah. This is this is what the contractors do, right? He's like, yeah, I've only got four yards of concrete. Well, I show up and Ooh, that's a lot of concrete. Yeah, it's probably the more than ten yards. Just know whatever the contractor's telling you, it's probably gonna be double. Okay, so that's one section over there. I don't hang on, I'll pull up here. That section there, and then he was gonna pull up this section here, but he only got a quarter of the way done. So I don't know what he's gonna do with the other half. He's probably gonna need another can. That's a buddy of mine too, so he's like, yeah, it's only four yards. Look at this can. <laughs> that is not four yards of concrete, buddy. But uh, 10 yards is my limit. Um, just because of the weight.
All right, so during this pickup, uh, my rail was a little bit off, so I had to correct it. I backed under it, and that's when you saw that uh, can kind of jostle. The key is there's a pivot point in the back of the truck where the rail goes up and down where the hinge is. You want to have the weight of the can past that hinge point. And before you lift the weight up off the ground, you want to have the center of the can or the center of gravity, the center of the weight past that hinge point. It's super important uh, for the mechanics of this truck. And so what you're what you're watching right now is me getting that center of gravity past the rear hinge point. And now I'm going to lower my rail and then pull the can, you know, all the way on. So the, the center of uh, the weight, you notice I adjusted it a little bit further forward. Now I'll lower the rail so that the can and the weight of the can can sit on the rollers and then I'll pull it all the way up and lock it into place. The mechanics are the same whether you have a trailer or whether you have a truck. So keep that in mind. Um, you want to get the front of the can before you lower the rail when you're first starting to lift it past that hinge point. And then before you actually lift the weight off of the ground, you want to make sure that the center of the can or the center of the gravity is past that hinge point. Then you can lift the weight and put it all onto the truck and let it roll all the way to the front to lock in. And of course, with any pickup, you know, all the neighbors come out to watch, you know, the big truck work. So no pressure. Well, we got her on. Uh, I ain't gonna lie, man, that was stressful. Thing was seriously heavy. Uh, I'm gonna take a guess and say I'm probably 20,000, possibly. I don't know. Four yards of concrete, y'all. <laughs> All right, we made it back to the yard, safe and sound. Uh, I did ride my third axle. Probably didn't need it, but um, it pushes up on the the uh, center of the uh, the frame. And I figured, man, can't hurt nothing, so we did that. But uh, yeah, guys, this is not uncommon. This is not stuff that you uh, won't run into. Um, you'll get people tell you it's just a little concrete, just a little dirt, and they'll fill that mug. Huh. Um, a lot of concrete. So, um, when you go over, you know, 5,000, when you go over like two, two to three tons, you know, then you want to start thinking about like your pivot points and how you're lifting the can, how much stress is on the cable, you know, so on and so forth. This is my first like super heavy load with this truck and it did really well. Um, we'll go dump it Monday and then uh, we'll put it back out Guys Lou with CFL dumpsters. Hope you learned something smash that subscribe Smash that like button smash that bell for notifications when new videos come out. It's Lou with CFL dumpsters. Thank you for watching. See you on the next one